Before we begin the video, I would like to direct you all to my subscribe start page, where all my premium content including the ultimate not safe for life iceberg and much more is hosted. It's a far better platform than Patreon, and as my Patreon page was removed due to false reports from someone harassing me on YouTube, I am no longer getting income from Patreon or anywhere else, so it would be a big help for you guys to subscribe to my subscribe start today and get something in return. This is the site of Unit 731. For decades, this was one of Japan's most closely guarded secrets. It was here that some of the most heinous crimes against humanity were committed during World War II. This documentary delves deep into the dark history of Unit 731 and uncovers the horrors that were hidden for so long. If you would like to support me directly, as I am not monetized by YouTube, go ahead and head over to some of my premium pages like Buy Me A Coffee or Subscribestar. There you're going to get over 20 plus hours of exclusive content not on YouTube, as well as Discord access and so much more. The following video is for a mature audience and is not intended for viewers under the age of 18. Moth Media Productions, Plague Moth, and Associates do not condone, glorify, or promote the actions or events which are discussed in the following video. It is meant to be a documentary and critical commentary on true and disturbing events that have happened in our world. Viewer discretion is advised. In the early 20th century, the Imperial Japanese Army established a secret biological and chemical warfare research unit known as Unit 731. Located in Harbin, China, the unit conducted some of the most brutal and inhumane experiments on human subjects in modern history. Unit 731 was founded in 1935 by Lieutenant General Ishishiro, a medical doctor who believed that Japan needed to be able to wage biological warfare in order to compete with the Western powers. The unit was located in the Japanese puppet state of Manchukuo, which encompassed parts of northeastern China and Inner Mongolia. The unit's main base was in Harbin, a city that had been occupied by the Japanese since 1931. Unit 731 conducted a wide range of experiments on human subjects, including prisoners of war, political dissidents, and civilians. Age and gender wasn't a factor either. They didn't discriminate. They easily took women and children as well. These experiments were designed to test the effects of biological and chemical agents, as well as to develop new weapons of mass destruction. One of the most infamous experiments conducted by Unit 731 was the vivisection of live human subjects without anesthesia. These experiments were conducted to study the various effects of diseases and injuries on the human body. Victims were often left to die after the procedure was completed. Unit 731 also conducted experiments on frostbite and hypothermia, in which subjects were forced to stand outside in freezing temperatures until they developed severe frostbite. Once the frostbite had set in, the subject's limbs were amputated without anesthesia to study the effects of surgery on the body. Other experiments included testing the effects of biological and chemical agents in human subjects, such as injecting prisoners with plague, cholera, and other deadly diseases. It even spraying children with pesticide containers full of deadly diseases and other chemical agents. They would even use people as dummies for weapon practice and weapon testing, supposedly, including bayonet practice. Heavy objects were also dropped onto bound victims to study the effects of crush injuries. They were locked up and deprived of food and water to test how long humans could survive without sustenance. Victims were only allowed to drink seawater or when given injections of mismatched human or animal blood to study transfusions and the clotting process. Also, to study the effects of high g-forces on pilots and falling paratroopers, they loaded human beings into large containers and spun them around at higher and higher speeds, kind of how NASA tests, but far more barbaric. They would do this until the victims lost consciousness or died, which usually happened around 10 to 15 Gs. They apparently also tested this on young children. So it appeared that no matter what the testing was in Unit 731, there would be no mercy for anyone, regardless of their age or creed. Prolonged x-ray exposure sterilized and killed thousands of victims. 
and inflicted horrible burns upon them as well for the ones unfortunate enough to survive. Unit 731 would also take a particular interest in the venereal disease syphilis, as it has been considered the bane of military since ancient times, and one of the most darkest atrocities to occur within Unit 731 is the forced rape and pregnancy that would occur purely for the means of testing. To ensure the effective transmission of diseases, people with syphilis were ordered to rape both female and male captives, and then they would be monitored to observe the onset of the disease. They would also rape victims to induce forced pregnancy so they could test up the fetuses as well as the pregnant victims. This included the same weapon and trauma experiments that were done to any other captives. Chemical injuries, crush injuries, bullets, shrapnel, bayonets. Some pregnant subjects were even cut open alive without anesthesia to observe the effects on the fetus. They would also conduct other experiments on the fetus and the pregnant victim during this time as well to see the cause and effect. Unit 731 cycled through tens of thousands of victims across several facilities. Captives of these facilities were infected with some of the most lethal pathogens known to science, such as the bubonic plague and typhus. Some other experiments included testing the effects of high-pressure chambers in which subjects were subjected to extreme pressure until their organs ruptured inside their bodies. Their research led them to breed some of the most lethal strains of biological pathogens possible and they monitored the quick progression and onset of the victims they tested them on. One incident with someone who was very sick, unresisting captives and the like, they'd be laid out on a slab so a line could be inserted into the carotid artery, but then siphon the blood out of the victim until the heart could barely pump. And then an officer in large boots would climb onto a table and jump on the victim's chest to break the rib cage to get the last bits of blood out of the heart. They intended to use all of their findings for warfare. Once Unit 731 developed a strong enough strain of the plague that they were satisfied with, the last generation of victims to be infected were exposed to a large number of fleas. These fleas were then packed in dust and sealed inside clay bomb casings to be used for later. And on October 4th of 1940, Japanese bomber planes deployed these casings, each loaded with 30,000 fleas that had each sucked the blood from a dying prisoner over at the Chinese village of Kwasu. A fine reddish dust settled all over the surfaces of town, the buildings, the people, their food. Shortly after, victims would develop a painful rash of flea bites that had nearly affected everyone. It described a disease which was quite unusual they said that after the Japanese left having attacked their villages in 1942, everyone became sick, or most people became sick, and many, many people died. And one of the diseases that the people contracted and died of was what they called rotten leg disease, which were the appearance of running sores, um, mainly on their legs, but sometimes other parts of their bodies, which simply wouldn't heal. They were extremely painful. They began as a small pimple and kind of came up from below and, and then would drain pus and be very painful and continue to drain pus for months or years and for some of them continued for their whole lifetime, which at that time was about 60 years. Mm. <laughs> More than 2,000 civilians died of plague following this attack. Another 1,000 or so died in a nearby village as well. After dropping the plague on people, they literally carried out attacks using anthrax, killing approximately 6,000 more people in the area of Yiwu. Towards the end of World War II, the Japanese actually planned on using the same tactics on U.S. soil, but never got a chance. In August of 1945, after Hiroshima and Nagasaki had both been bombed, the Soviet army had invaded Manchuria and utterly annihilated the Japanese army there. 
The Emperor read his infamous surrender declaration over the radio. As far as the Japanese were concerned, Unit 731 was officially disbanded. They began to burn records, destroying any useful information the team had managed to gather in 13 years of torture and research. And scientists, he's prepared to speak openly. And after all, we've come to talk to you about Unit 731. This was the man in charge of destroying the evidence of Unit 731, of burning down the complex and killing the 400 prisoners. Our unit, Unit 731, was ordered to carry out executions. So, since we had to execute the logs anyway, we believed that it was, in fact, an honorable act on our part to give them the opportunity to offer their bodies to contribute to the development of the human race. Most of the scientists slip back into civilian life without notice and occupy Japan as if nothing ever happened to them many of them becoming prominent members of university faculty, professors, and well-regarded scientists elsewhere. Similar to Operation Paperclip, the U.S. also played a part in covering up Unit 731. After Japan's surrender in 1945, the existence of Unit 731 was revealed to the world. However, the United States government, which had granted immunity to the leaders of the unit in exchange for their research, covered up the atrocities in order to gain strategic advantage over the Soviet Union. The Japanese government also sought to cover up the existence of Unit 731, and many of its members went to hold on high-ranking positions in Japanese society, like I said. It wasn't until the 1980s that the Japanese government officially acknowledged the existence of Unit 731 and apologized for its actions. Unit 731 remains one of the darkest chapters in modern history, a testament to the horrors that could be committed in the name of science and war. The legacy of the Unit 731 serves as a reminder of the importance of holding those in power accountable for their actions and the need for ethical guidelines in scientific research and warfare. Unit 731 is just one of the many atrocities committed during World War II. The rape of Nanking in 1937 was also something worth mentioning as well where Japanese forces invaded the Chinese city of Nanking and proceeded to massacre an estimated 300,000 people, including women and children. Mass executions, rape, and torture were the norm. Also during World War II, Japan's military also enslaved an estimated 200,000 women from across Asia as, quote, comfort women, trafficked for sexual use for soldiers during the war. Many of these women were kidnapped or tricked into the role and were subjected to physical and sexual abuse as well as forced abortions and sterilization. Aside from Unit 731, other countries also conducted cruel and inhumane experiments on prisoners during World War II. Of course, for example, the Nazi doctors conducted experiments on concentration camp prisoners such as exposing them to extreme temperatures, testing different methods of sterilization, and other similar atrocities to Unit 731. The Soviet Union also conducted experiments on prisoners, including tests of toxic gas. It should be known, though, that the human experimentation extended well beyond the war. And while much of Unit 731's human experimentation occurred during the war years, some of which continued after the war had ended, according to some reports, some of Unit 731's members were able to continue their research under the guise of civilian institutions, and former prisoners were even recaptured and used as test subjects once again. The victims of Unit 731 were not limited to Chinese prisoners as well. While the majority of the unit's victims were Chinese, there were also victims from other countries including Korea, Mongolia, the Soviet Union, and even America. The extent of Unit 731's research is still largely unknown. While many of the atrocities committed by Unit 731 have been documented, the full extent of the unit's research is not entirely known. Shortly after the war, much of Unit 731's documentation was destroyed. Some former members have been accused of destroying evidence after Japan's surrender. And the fact that some of the former members hold prominent positions in Japanese society, outside of academia as well, but well into politics, 
is one of the most haunting and disturbing facts I've ever learned about. Thank you for joining me during this video. If you want to see more videos like this, and an even darker content that's not safe for YouTube, please head over to my Subscribestar page or buy me a coffee and become a member today. There, not only you support me directly because I'm not paid by YouTube, but you also get a lot in return, including Discord access, the ultimate not safe for life iceberg, early access to videos, exclusive videos that aren't on YouTube like I said, and so much more. Thank you for joining me in this disturbing piece of history. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See ya.